Now that we have talked a bit about chemical formulas, we would like to know more about how those formulas are determined. An empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of any two or more elements combined together. For example, water is H2O, and that simply means that hydrogen and oxygen combine in a two to one ratio to form that compound. In this lab, we will determine the empirical formula of zinc chloride. For this procedure, you will need a 400 milliliter beaker, zinc pieces, and three molar hydrochloric acid. From the material safety data sheet, we know that hydrochloric acid is a clear solution that has a pretty distinct chlorine odor. Of course, you are going to do everything you can to avoid inhaling this chemical as it is toxic when breathed in or ingested. Hydrochloric acid is corrosive to pretty much any body tissue, so be very careful when handling it. You will take your beaker to the fume hood to collect your hydrochloric acid. Mass out between one and a half and three grams of zinc pieces. This will end up being somewhere between five and ten of the pieces that are given in the lab. Record this exact mass in your lab notebook. In the fume hood, add about 50 milliliters of three molar hydrochloric acid to your 400 milliliter beaker. Note that you need approximately 50 milliliters. You do not need to be exact in this measurement, and in fact, attempting to get exactly 50 milliliters in your beaker will only slow you and everyone else down. Be aware that other people in the room are carrying glass and acid. Add the zinc pieces to the hydrochloric acid. Observe the reaction for a few minutes, and then place your beaker in the fume hood. Over the course of the next few hours, your beaker and its contents will be gently heated until the excess hydrochloric acid and water are evaporated away. Left in the beaker will be solid zinc chloride. From zinc chloride's material safety data sheet, we know that it is an unassuming white solid that can be pretty nasty if handled incorrectly. Be very careful when handling zinc chloride. When you come back the next day, you will have some white, sludgy looking stuff in the bottom of your beaker. This is the zinc chloride that was produced in the reaction. While the liquid was boiled off yesterday, zinc chloride is hygroscopic, which means that it attracts water from the air. So while it was dry yesterday, now it is not so much. This is a big deal because we want to know the mass of only the zinc chloride. Since the water will add mass and will change our results, we want to get rid of that water. We will do this by gently heating the zinc chloride to drive the water off. Gently is the key word here. It is best to use a low flame and move the beaker back and forth so you do not overheat the zinc chloride. You also want to be very careful not to melt or splatter the zinc chloride. This requires you really pay attention to what you are doing and notice when the water has evaporated. Once you have driven off all the water, you will be left with a white powdery zinc chloride. Remove the beaker from the flame and allow it to cool. When you are able to handle the beaker, find its mass. Repeat the gentle heating procedure. Allow the beaker to cool again and mass it again. If the post heating masses are within 0.02 grams of each other, you are done. If the mass difference is more than 0.02 grams, repeat the heating procedure. For example, in our first heating, we have a mass of 45.76 grams, and in our second heating, we have a mass of 45.71 grams. This is a difference of negative 0.05 grams, which means we are not within our 0.02, and we should repeat our heating. After heating for a third time, we have a difference of negative 0.01 grams, which is within our 0.02 difference, and so we can use the 45.70 as our official mass of our beaker in zinc chloride. In the fume hood will be a beaker labeled zinc chloride waste. When you are finished with your massing, you will rinse your zinc chloride into this beaker. Do not flush it down the drain. You need to wash your beaker with soap and remove any labels that you have written on the side of your beaker. You also need to wash your hands with soap and water, just in case you have any acid or any zinc chloride left on your skin. The data for this lab is pretty straightforward, in that you need to know the mass of your labeled beaker, the mass of your zinc, and then on the second day, you'll need to know the mass of the beaker plus your dried zinc chloride for a couple times. So before being able to do the lab, you will need to have in your lab notebook the title of the lab, the question for the lab, a brief description of your procedure, and your data table set up and ready to go.